Comedian Des Bishop is coming to the Chicagoland for Mother's Day weekend, performing at Zany's in the city and in Rosemont. Des, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thanks. I didn't realize it was Mother's Day weekend. I hope that doesn't I hope that doesn't affect my sales. <laughs> <laughs> no, because everyone wants to take out their mom. They want to go ahead, you know, and celebrate mom. So you might get a little bit more, you know, mamas in the audience for the uh, for these shows. I, I, I deal. I, that's really my target market these days, to be honest with you. <laughs> because it's either those who are like, hey, mom likes to laugh, or they owe mom a lot of favors. And they're like, we got to take her uh, and promise her some big stuff. Yeah, yes. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just, you're recovering. You had a, a little accident, but uh, we're getting you back in the Chicagoland area. How's physical therapy? How's everything kind of going? You're off crutches, which I think is a, is a good start. Yeah, I'm off crutches, and uh, my first, as I was telling you before we started recording, my first weekend of shows is actually these Chicago shows. Uh, I think that probably the good news for the Chicago shows is that I was actually supposed to go to the Melbourne Comedy Festival and do a run of, coincidentally enough, Mother's Day mentioned a show that I had written about my about my mother. That was it's more like a one man show, kind of like about grief and stuff. So I would I should have been just coming back from that and not working on new material. But instead, I've been in New York and started doing shows again about three weeks ago. And I've been working on a lot of new material. So actually, the Chicago shows are probably going to be better because of my injury. Well, well, well yeah, pluses and minus for, for both for that for that sentence. But, you know, we're glad you're on your recovery. But we're also glad we're getting uh, some new material as well. Well, I'm feeling pressure because. Just it wasn't part of the plan, but I, I got booked to do New Year's Eve in Chicago. So I did New Year's Eve in the Den, uh, which was a was a great show. But now I'm feeling like I can't be doing that show or I don't want to be doing the stuff that I did the last time I was in. This time last year, I, the January last year, I was also in uh, in Rosemont and in Old Town Zanies. So anyway, long story short, I. Uh, I, I'm feeling the pressure, but I'm able to respond to it now because I'm at the Comedy Cellar every night working on new bits. And let's go ahead and mention, too, Chicago Zany is already sold out to so make sure you get those tickets for, for the Rosemont shows uh, for Friday and Saturday. Which I understand that some people might be like, oh, Rosemont's a bit out of the city. But here's a little little secret about Chicago comedy. The room in Rosemont, I think, is the best comedy room in the city. Like, just in terms of, like, how it works physically, the shape, the atmosphere, the vibes. So if if it's not too much hassle, even though you probably want to go to the Old Town show if you live close to the city center, I highly recommend uh, jumping on the, the L or jumping in your car and heading out there. Plus, they have loads of parking. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The older I get, the more I free, appreciate free parking. They got free parking. You also got some great restaurants there in the area. So you don't have to get out. You can just go to one of the restaurants. And yes, then head right and to you, if you like all the architectural mistakes of the 1960s and 70s, then a trip to Rosemont is really worth it because it is it is everything that's wrong with the sort of concrete jungle planning of that era. But it really works as a venue and it's really convenient for parking because it was designed in an era where they thought the car would be king. Uh, uh, 100%. Uh, you're also <laughs> heading back to Ireland shortly after, after Chicago shows. Um, tell me a little bit about that trip. Well, that trip's just a quick trip. The comedy festival there called the Cat Laughs Comedy Festival, which is, it's their 30-year anniversary. So they asked if I would come back for it. I mean, I, maybe you don't know or don't know, but most of my career was actually in Ireland. I'm, I'm kind of like an Irish comedian with a New York accent. So uh, I perform in Ireland a lot, just not as much since the pandemic because I came back to New York for the pandemic and then met my now wife. So I live in New York a little bit more than uh, previous times. But uh, but I do get back to Ireland quite a bit, and actually Ireland's healthcare is a little cheaper than America. So I had the surgery that we mentioned at the beginning. <laughs> I had my ACL reconstruction in Ireland too. So, uh, but it'll be the first time I'm performing in Ireland since um, in 2024. That's awesome. Um, you just mentioned you're now married. Congratulations! Oh, thank and you. Tell me a little bit about Hannah because she's also a comedian. Do you also like? Do you ever go on on tour together? Do you ever like? When we see her in the audience, as you and the audience at her, at her shows, tell me a little bit about about that. Well, you know, uh, well, we have a podcast together now called Burnaphone. But even before we started doing Burnaphone together, I did because because Hannah has had a very good like explosion in her career since we met. I mean, she was she was doing okay when we met, but her career has really taken off since we've met. So over the last couple of years you will get some Hannah fans at my shows. And uh, if I mention my wife, they get very excited. <laughs> I, I try to keep it, 
you know, I, I try to keep it a bit more general. You know, at the end of the day, these are just jokes. You know, we're not this isn't like an expose on the marriage. But of course, there's no longer any anonymity about who my wife is. So if I do a wife joke, people will shout out Hannah uh, in the crowd. Um, but uh, sometimes we do shows together uh, where I'll uh, open up for her if she's in like a really cool spot like Miami. I did with her. All the ski resorts I did with her, which is how I ended up messing up my ACL in the first place because she had shows in Aspen. Uh, and then the odd time we'll do like a like a low key, like a we did a show at the Stand Comedy Club in New York for New Year's Eve one time. But we haven't done any um, we haven't done any podcast shows together and we haven't done anything like, uh, you know, where we're like on stage together hosting or anything like that. Well, that'll be fun. Hopefully, maybe in twenty twenty five. I'm just throwing it out there in the uh, in the universe because I'm, I'm fans. Of, I'm a fan of the podcast. And I'm want to see. Uh, you know, hopefully that'll be you know something that either next year or. Well, actually, you know, <laughs> Hannah has a Hannah has a Netflix special coming out, so this will be because Hannah's you know hasn't been doing comedy that long really. So this will be the Netflix special will come out, and this will be her first time feeling the pressure of new material. So maybe actually this summer. We'll do a couple of new material nights together. That would that would make sense because that that's like a that's like a hard thing to get your head around in the earlier part of your career because in the early part of your career you just you have the jokes that you've always done and they feel like everything to you uh, and there's like a like an extra attachment the first time you have to like let them go. So uh, she hasn't really had the experience yet of like new material shows and just being up there with the pad. So maybe we can uh, maybe we can do a couple of those together because I I'm also going to be needing some new material for an Irish tour in autumn of 2024 and winter of 2025. So uh, we could split the bill and do some new material stuff. There you go. Speaking of Hannah, she was on, on Summer House. You also made an appearance there uh, on the show. You know, what was that reality show, you know, kind of dipping your toe in, into that? What was that like? Especially like, did your like numbers go up? Did your DMs get crazy? Do, you know, fans in the uh, at your shows, like how did that kind of change for you? Well, it's funny because that was not a career decision. That was, uh, I met Hannah literally right before she went into that house. It was a unique situation where it was the lockdown summer. So they were locked in the house. So there was no, she wasn't getting out on like a Sunday and then hanging out during the week and going back in. So after meeting her and I, I actually, when I met her, was pretty sure that we we had, you know, like I was pretty sure we were going to end up together, which I was right, by the way. Uh, but, you know, so I wasn't too keen on waiting for them to finish the, you know, what was supposed to be seven weeks of film. It ended up being eight and a half weeks of filming because they had a, they had a delay because of a COVID scare in the house. So in the end, you know, through various like back and forths and different things, I had the opportunity to go in and see her, which I was just dying to see her, you know. But of course, when you go in there, then you're actually on TV, which is quite funny because they can do whatever they want with what happens. But <laughs> all I cared about was, you know, just seeing her and, and you know, being being silly. So uh, all in all, I, I didn't really pay too much attention to like what it you know, what it was doing for like my career. Cause at the end of the day, I just saw it as like a, you know, wanting to see her because I really <laughs> felt in my heart of hearts that we had a chance to be something like, you know, unique, like a relationship wise. I really yeah. thought that there was, there was something between us. So uh, I never really sort of saw it in career terms, you know. You're going to be here for Mother's Day weekend and your mother passed, your father passed, but you also wrote shows for both of them and yeah. also sometimes you incorporate jokes about your your cancer journey as well too talk a little bit about maybe some of those somber moments of your life and maybe dealing with them through comedy or being able to kind of express yourself and your feelings um through your work yeah i mean with the cancer with the cancer you know i had cancer in 2000 so i was actually i was only doing comedy about three years when that happened uh and honestly those jokes like I, th those jokes were just like uh, immediate. In fact, I wrote some of those jokes while I was in the hospital. Like I, I just had some immediately funny thoughts about what I was dealing with, with testicular cancer. I never really did like a show. I think like the, 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 the memory of that or the way that it's written about historically is because it's like in my Wikipedia that I like did a show about my cancer, but I never actually did a show about having cancer the way that I did do a show about my dad getting ill and then subsequently my mother dying, right? So those two were very much like, I'm going to do a show about this experience that I'm having with finding out that my father's going to die. I'm going to do a show about my mother being dead, you know? So one was like a show about 
end of life. And one was a really a show about grief and loss and, you know, and also obviously my relationship with both of them, which is a bit more traditional, right? Jokes about your relationship with your parents, but the testicular cancer stuff, that was just kind of like, that was just kind of naturally funny. It, it's about your balls, common comedy inspiration point, <laughs> you know? Uh, so, uh, but again, I, you know, I think Partly maybe because I was, my comedy is mostly in Ireland, you know, Irish, UK, Australian, J European comedy scene lends itself to more storytelling. So it was easier to sort of say, hey, let's take this traditionally not that funny scenario and tell some stories about it. Uh, but in the case of my dad, the show about my dad, my dad was nearly James Bond. Before my dad got sick, I had this idea about the story of my dad's kind of like nearly successful acting career and the sacrifices that he made for us uh, on top of a heavier story, which I never put into the, the show. My dad was in a James Bond, but I did write a book about my dad and told the story of his horrific childhood. So I always had the idea about a one man show about my dad's kind of like the conflicts and contrasts of his life and his regrets. But actually when he got sick, just suddenly the, the, the live show just became the arc of it just became very clear to me. And I very early on when he got sick began to sort of try to structure a show. And coincidentally enough, both my mother's show and my dad's show, the Melbourne comedy festival, unfortunately became my Petri dish. So when my dad got sick, I took that to Melbourne really without, without it really being a show. So it was kind of a work in progress show in Melbourne. And then my mother actually died nine days before my Melbourne run in 2019, the show wasn't even listed as a show about my dead mother, but I did end up sort of like vomiting out a load of like immediately, uh, you know, stories that just immediately had just happened to me. Uh, and that was the beginning of what became Mia Mama, but it wasn't even called, I can't even remember what that show was called, <laughs> but the audience got, the audience got a bit of a surprise because I'd say 60, 70% of that show was actually just stories about what had just happened to us. So many expats here in the Chicagoland area from Ireland. I mean, tell me a little bit about the the audience and maybe some of those people. Because like you said, if you're watching a lot of European television or if you were, you know, an expat or you spend time in Europe, you you're know more of your work, especially on like the equivalent of a PBS station that you did yes. a lot of your shows on. I mean, tell me a little bit about coming to a city where there's so many, you know, Irish uh, folks here to come to see your uh, perform. Well, until very recently, those were the only cities that I could go to and sell tickets. I mean, I've gone to plenty of American cities, but I've performed to pretty small crowds in a lot of those American cities. But Chicago actually has always come out in strength. And that's largely because you get a huge Irish community, like people from Ireland. Uh, and then you also get like people whose parents are Irish or grandparents are Irish and they still go to Ireland. So they became familiar with me through their cousins sending them DVDs or they spent time in Ireland and saw my stuff. Um, and then other people just bring their co-workers and colleagues and say, oh, this guy's funny. We know him from back home, right? So Chicago, I've always sold reasonably well. The hope is that because I just put out a special on YouTube and the clips, particularly on Instagram, have done very well, like really well. And I've noticed quite the difference in just people responding. And I I, I, I have a fair a feeling, but I can't be certain that the Irish will be there, which is essential for me but that there may be some, some recent fans and that, that would be pretty, that'll be pretty exciting. Yeah. Cause that, that's the, you know, one of the things that I like to do too, is, you know, when I'm on Instagram and looking at all the different comedians and watching their jokes, and then sending it to, to your friends, you know, that's one of the things that I love to do is, you know, brighten up someone's day with something that they're going to find amusing or funny and maybe find a new comedian that way. So I hope that brings you, you know, much success in people, you know, across the globe doing that for you. Yeah, yeah. Once I, I don't want to piss off the Irish by seeming too American to them. You know, they get they can be they can be quite territorial with their their the people that they love. But uh, but you know, it, it is it is exciting for me if 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 it's true and like I you know we see that there's a, a new audience that is fun for me because you know I I've I had a very successful career in Ireland and you know I've toured a lot in the UK I've toured a lot in Australia but I've never really you know, found like an American audience. So if, th if that is beginning this, that will be pretty exciting for me. And this is the, this, cause so it's just coincidentally, I know I keep mentioning my HCL reconstruction, but actually I dropped the special like a week and a half before this injury happened. So I have not had the opportunity to go out and see if there's been any difference since, 
you know, all these clips went up and, you know, I, I felt this kind of momentum shift. So this this Chicago weekend that we've actually been talking about the whole time is really the first tester of is there any difference? So we'll see. There's, there's going to be a difference. Chicago land people, you got to come out for this. <laughs> of course, the Chicago show was already sold out. That's going to be on Thursday in Old Town. We catch them Friday and Saturday in Rosemont. The venue is is amazing. The area is great. There's a lot of restaurants, free parking, as we had mentioned, you know, as well, too. And you get to see Des. Uh, doing some some new material there for uh, for Mother's Day weekend. Yes, I look forward to it. Awesome! Thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks so much. Nice chatting to you. You too.